Hi, I'm Nat, and today I want to talk about the declining birth rate and a new documentary by Stephen Shaw called Birth Gap, a Childless World. I can't really remember when I last had any hope, and I certainly can't remember when anyone else did either. Because really, since women stopped being able to have babies, what's left to hope for? The world was stunned today by the death of Diego Ricardo, the youngest person on the planet. The youngest person on Earth was 18 years, 4 months, 20 days, 16 hours and 8 minutes old. The ultimate mystery, why are women infertile? Some say it's genetic experiments, pollution. Why do you think we can't make babies anymore? Doesn't matter. It's all over in 50 years. It's too late. Move along! Move along! Coming from the world of data science, I felt I understood populations are going up and that that's a problem. When I saw what was actually happening, I couldn't sleep. I think that the biggest problem the world will face in 20 years is population collapse. Collapse. I agree. All, without exception, all industrialized countries, developed countries have below replacement fertility. Yeah, it's striking and there is no single explanation. In different contexts, you have very different stories. It's never happened in human history. There's no precedence. What people usually don't think about is what do you do in a world where the playgrounds are empty and the nursing homes are all full? I call this a birth gap, Matt. Right. I haven't seen anybody do this before. How feet are same. Wow. Gosh. It's kind of scary. That's bad. What I hear about often is overpopulation. I've never heard this concern. Norge trenger flere barn. My name is Jodie Day and I'm a childless woman. It was devastating. It's like a shock. What are we making with our future? In life, I'm always optimistic about everything. But I'm not about this. I'm pessimistic. I'm pessimistic because I don't think people realize what's going to happen. I don't know how and when it's going to stop. I want to emphasize this. The biggest issue in 20 years will be population collapse. I want to talk about the declining birth rate and a new documentary by Stephen Shaw called Birth Gap, A Childless World. And in this documentary, he goes through all of the data that essentially proves that there is a declining birth rate worldwide. It's not just in those developed countries like Italy and Japan and South Korea, but everywhere. Even African countries, he explains, even if they're going up right now in percentage of births and how many babies are born, well, they're reaching the top and eventually they will also collapse. And it is a worldwide problem. Africa is... Uh, several decades behind most of the rest of the planet in terms of population trends. But the trends are identical. The number of children per woman in sub-Saharan Africa is falling by one every 15 years, which is fast. Some countries like Malawi and Ethiopia, they're falling by one child every 10 years. So I liken it to a, a roller coaster. Some countries are at the front already on the other side, like Japan, much of Europe. Some countries like US, UK and France are somewhere towards the front, but not quite there. Whereas Africa is in the kind of rear car, still on the way up, but the trends will be the same. As mentioned in the documentary and by Stephen Shaw in a bunch of interviews, including with Redacted and with Jordan Peterson, he says that once you reach your 30s, especially as a woman, you only have a 50-50 chance to have any children let alone more than one. You know, one of the facts that, that uh, came up a, a, across every country we looked at was that women turning 30 without a child, if you're childless at 30, the, at most you've got a 50% chance of ever becoming a mother. And that's maximum. It's actually lower than that in most countries. I could not find anywhere any example. So it's a toss of a coin, turning 30 without a, without a, without a child. Researchers have determined that the average rate of replacement for a population is around 2 point something children, depending on the country. But people are having way less than that. And populations usually stay sort of stable, even though they decline as a trend, because some people will have four or five and some people will have zero. The problem is, as people keep waiting longer and longer and longer, and especially women thinking, 
oh, I have all the time in the world. I first want to have a full career and I want to be completely realized. And I want to have all of these experiences that are very important to me. And all that matters in this world is myself because I am a woman and I've been told that for years and years. Well, people wait and then people realize that their fertile years and the chances they had to have some children are diminishing more and more. And it's kind of insane and creepy that companies, big companies, especially in tech, will offer women either abortions or to freeze their eggs, but that childcare and maternity leave are not part of that discussion. As is par for the course nowadays with universities and colleges, well, Stephen Shaw was supposed to screen this documentary at Cambridge University, but of course, activists and students decided to protest it and try to stop him from showing it. He was able to only hold the Q&A session at a smaller room and not even screen the documentary to students. And this, I think, highlights even a broader problem with society in general that I talk quite a lot about, where people, without even having watched or engaged with Stephen or the documentary, are able to say things like this when, if they had watched the documentary, they would realize that most of the first part, which is free on YouTube, and I'll link it up here and in the description, it deals with women that maybe waited too long or thought they didn't want children and they decided they did and it was too late. And it tells their stories and the absolute heartbreak and pain that they feel by essentially being lied to, just like these students are being lied to, that having children is not a good idea. And I have been pulled into conversations where I have frankly been brought myself to the depths of understanding the suffering mm -hmm. from these people who thought they were going through life, getting the education, probably, yeah. Yeah. starting the career path, probably, thinking that, well, you know what, I'm not 30 yet. I've got time to meet a partner. Yeah. And then getting to the point of often there is no partner. Yeah or yeah. that biology gets in the way. Yeah, well, it turns out that life is shorter than people think. Did you want to have children? Sim, sim. Gostaria de ter tido um filho há cinco anos atrás. Gostaria. Mas não, não aconteceu. Mas gostaria, sim. Gostaria de ter tido antes. De poder ter tido filho antes. 20代の頃にもっとデートをしてもっといい人を見つけてもっと子供を作るようにあの努力すればよかったと思ってます。I think if you caught me at the right day in my 20s when I was very in love or excited about a partner, I would say yes. But if you were to pry into that, I might say, oh no, that seems crazy to have a kid in my 20s. Llegó un momento en mi vida que a lo mejor sí quise de verdad intentarlo nuevamente, pero era muy tarde, too late. And we keep seeing this trend on social media, Instagram, TikTok, where women 35 and up have started posting videos crying sometimes, saying, I really regret not being able to have children. And now that I am at this age where it is virtually impossible or very, very risky, well, I'm starting to reevaluate my life kind of in retrospect and trying to warn younger women to not leave that aside and not leave that to, oh, I can do it later. Because it is true and unfortunately a biological truth that women don't have as much time as men maybe to start a family or to start thinking or focusing on that. There's even a biological impulse within all of us, even as many want to try to suppress it, to have children. My friend was like, you know, you'll meet the one one day, don't give up. But now I'm at a point where I hope I don't because what happens if I meet him and he wants kids and I'm too old to not be able to give him any? So it's easier for me to say I don't want kids. <laughs> Having like a weird existential crisis. I don't know why I'm posting this on TikTok, but I think I just, I need to know I'm not alone. I'm sitting here with just this horrible realization. I've been divorced for three years and in that three years I have spent most of my days figuring out how I can become physically, 
mentally, financially, spiritually healthy enough to be able to afford and take care of a child. And not only have I taken that time, but I've done the math, and it it does not work out. I am not young enough, or fertile enough, or financially stable enough. To even do another round of IVF and at 36 like I'm sorry like you're gonna say like you have time like I don't you know your family friends have kids and then the next thing you turn around the kids are having kids why you still not having kids I'm 44 years almost 45 I man I got friends and family that's around my age as grandparents right now, you know what I'm saying? Um, but it, it's a hard thing to deal with, man, but it's just something that we have to deal with. And now I want to talk to people around my age and my generation, which is late 20s, early 30s, and say that, yes, you have been lied to, and you might want to start really thinking about where you're headed in life and what you want out of it. I mean, having a career and having a lot of money and having a lot of success and a lot of education is great. But at the end of the day, once you're old and probably alone, well, is that going to be the most fulfilling life you could lead? Is focusing so much on your career and your goals and yourself really going to bring you as much happiness as you think? Is selecting the exact perfect partner that you imagine in your head really worth it when they probably don't really exist? And being a cog in the machine and having this wonderful job, maybe in tech, maybe in your chosen career path, well, you're really just a number to all of them. Even if you get awards and achievements and accolades and your colleagues love you and you move up in the corporate ladder, well, they can always fire you. You're not that essential to anyone in the workforce at all, be ye a woman or a man. That is what I started to realize too, that focusing on just what I want is only going to get me so far in life. Starting to see outside of myself is what really brought me joy and brought me purpose. And I don't even have kids yet, but it just made me decide that I want to have kids. And I really don't like Andrew Tate. I really don't like him. Guy likes him a little bit more. But he does have this whole speech about children and women. And while most people will go out and say, oh my God, he's such a misogynist. I can't believe he's saying women can't be independent. Well, he's right. At the end of the day, and the image and the picture he paints is 100% right. And something that I think is worth young women listening to because again maybe right now you think that that's misogynist and it's bigoted and it's transphobic and blah 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 but one day you will remember all of us that we're trying to tell you otherwise when you're regretting your decisions in life and your lack of real purpose and real drive and a real meaning out of i had a career and then i got fired a life without children is is vapious and it's inane and it's pointless. And you may sit here and think that your career matters, but the truth is that your job will fire you out of whim and not give us right. don't give a solitary That's shit. So and when you're 52 and you're past it with no grandchildren in a house by yourself, and all your friends have grandchildren in this beautiful life, and you're sitting there by yourself, do you think the fact that you can afford a few extra Gucci bags is gonna genuinely make you feel happy? I was at my grandmother's 93rd birthday. I looked there, my grandmother had nine children because there was my father and and eight more they all had a bunch of kids blah 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 i stood there and I looked at my 93 year old grandmother and there was a room a whole room full with maybe 70 people that came from that one woman isn't that remarkable yeah. that nobody cared about her career nobody asked what job she did nobody asked how many times she went to the club nobody asked if she had time to go to festivals no you had 70 sentient beings including myself Full of life from one woman who dedicated herself to being a mother and, and 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 a good and a good wife that is beautiful and if you sit here and genuinely think that you're going to work your ass off through your fertile years and by the age of 54 
you're not going to be suicidal alone with a cat, then you're dumb. <laughs> but the that, happiest really women on things. earth have children and a man who's paying the bills and their mothers. That's the huge. happiest people on earth. I guarantee it. Your this your mothers, true. ask your own mother, do you yeah. regret having me? Literally. She's going to say, of course not. not. You're the nope. best thing that ever happened to me. <laughs> so now you're going to sit here and you're going to end your own Come bloodline? All your ancestors were out there surrounded by saber-toothed fucking tigers <laughs> trying to survive on the streets out there in caveman days just to get to the final end where we have all the medical care <laughs> and you can live in a nice warm house for your fucking selfish ass to say, no, I don't want kids. I'm too busy in the fucking strip club or going to fucking oh, Mallorca no. to, have a fucking, <laughs> to have a pina colada on the beach. It's absolutely <laughs> insulting to your entire bloodline. Everything everyone above you has ever done and struggled for. All the times your grandparents went to work when they didn't feel like it just for you to exist for your selfish ass to say no. Me and my passions and my dreams and my shit drawings and my Instagram page <laughs> is worth more than ever having children. You're a selfish fuck. Fuck that, you should all have kids. And I'm not advocating for going out there and sleeping with the first person you find on the street and having a child with them, but at least putting that idea in your head and maybe reevaluating and reorienting your life to something that carries more meaning than just your own needs and your own self and your own selfishness sorry to put it that way but it's true and i do think that this is one of the reasons we have so many issues in the world right now because people are just focusing on themselves and what i need what i want what i am and damn everybody else and the future and the past let's just live for today and for ourselves and not care about anything or anyone else once again the documentary is well worth it and it's down in the description below Thank you for watching and I hope you have a great rest of your day.